Hi everyone, back here at Pathfinder Kingmaker again. And I want to go here before I go here, I think. Yeah. How long do I have before the Bold Hill Top? I think it's a long time. Don't know if that's timed either. Actually, I do a hard save now. Because it is timed on that. Every top. So, Valerie's. Just in case I ask it up and it's timed. Um, okay, let's put that way. How many of the bags of holding do I have? I've got two. From Oleg and from Bartholomew. Okay, I think. I see it's got one as well. It's a big one though. Oh, I wish that would stop. If you click on that and scroll, I took my finger off it and I just go up and down, it keeps it scrolling. It's annoying. It's 100. Yeah, I think Hasu's has got another one that's 200. That's a lot of money, 50,000 or something. Um. Anyway. Enough natter. Let's go this way. I think it's up and round. Yeah. The hills seem pleasant, even welcoming. Dark grey doom and gloom, just walking along the path and enjoying the view of all cute little white pyramids built out of pebble stones. Oh wait, was it pebble stone? Horror of horrors, what mistook with pebbles were polished bones. All along the path, the grass was riddled with pyramids made of polished cobalt remains. It got us thinking, is it wise to follow just a grim path, a way marked by death itself? The final danger, we follow the path. Yeah, of course it is. Trying to brush away thoughts, who may have polished the cobalt vertebrae and why, we quickly moved along the path leading to the pale hills. It didn't take long for us to reach a mountain river with a bridge crossing over it. Well, bridge may be a bit generous. It's actually just a long branch, about as thick as an arm, spanning from one bank to the other. It may be enough for a cobalt cross, since we could see another of these small bone pyramids on the other side. It didn't look nearly strong enough for our party to cross. Before deciding to how to proceed, we carefully examined the river. We quickly discovered the river was quite deep. I plunged my arm shoulder deep into the water and couldn't even feel the bed. It was fast too. Current pulled a dried leaf off my sleeve and it was gone from my sight in a blink. It was cold, very, very cold. Frankly, none of us was interested in taking a swim. Let's examine the branch that would help us cross the river. The branch did have one thing going for it though, being so thick, it happened to be quite sturdy. That didn't make the flimsy crossing any less slippery or challenging to anyone daring to set foot on it. I wonder how many cobalts have slipped on the wet back. I found a watery grave in the nice cold river. Pepper, precautions were definitely in order. We readied a rope to endure the daredevil's safety. Foresight had always been among our esteemed Baroness's strongest virtues. With the practiced motions of a seasoned adventurer, she pulled the length of rope out of a pack and prepared it to be tied around the waist of whoever would be brave enough to step on the branch and attempt to cross the river. That would at least help reduce the risk of drowning. Okay, here we're going to do. It's going to have to be Ekin Dayu, isn't it? Forty-one altogether. I don't know which one's the highest thing, though. Okay, then I can die. So. Akandaya was unperturbed by the thin branch and the speed and current. After a deep breath, a volunteer set forth along the precarious crossing. One step, then another. A few feet crossed with no trouble. I started to think that may, maybe things would be fine. That's when the branch jerked and started to shake. It was rolling over. With no time to think at all, Akandaya, oh, no time to think, all Akandaya could do was don't roll or one to three. Jump to the other side. Oh, the lengths we've gone efforts to keep our pride and tarnish and our pants dry. 
One incredible jump, Ekandaya was on the other bank. It took a moment to catch his breath and turned his attention back to the crossing. As soon as the rope was securely fixed on both banks, the branch didn't seem as much of a death trap as it had before. There was no more time we crossed the river. One small pyramid made of polished cobalt bones may be a bit spooky, but it's not unbearable. How about thousands? We found ourselves looking over a proper cobalt graveyard. Each little pyramid a mark of a cobalt death. That mark made out of their own remains, Gish. The real enigma though, was in the heart of the burial ground. The centerpiece was made of hundreds, maybe even thousands of polished bones, all put together to form the head of an enormous dragon. Imagine it. These small, nonsensical reptiles, someone managed to create a sculpture both fearsome and magnificent. Such might and yet such frailty as well. If a single bone would be removed from the foundation, this beautiful statue would crumble to dust. An eye spot, and an even eye. Blah, and I even spotted one such flimsy bone. Regardless, we'd come face to face with irrefutable proof. Bobos, for better or worse, were changing. This news had no impact on our search for the shrouds, though. The land was clearly sacred to the kobolds, and it seemed unlikely that they would bring their new friends here. But how would the Baroness deal with the structure we found in her realm? Um, Baroness deemed it proper to respect the kobold shrine. Follow my advice. The Baroness had just the dangerously loose bone and the hope of reinforcing the the remarkable composition. The grace was standing to leave when the glint of the dragon's jaw drew attention. Carefully reached the side, the Baroness pulled out what seemed to be a dirty stone. Beneath the outer layer of clay, behind a large, finely cut emerald, it seemed the cobalt spirits decided to grant us a gift. Stowing the offering in a bag, the Baroness turned and left. We dutifully, dutifully followed our leader, and soon the bizarre cobalt burial ground was far behind us. Nice, another emerald. So that's that done. Let's just join this up as I go around. Who do we have? Ah, oh, this book event. It's all something probably no one else had ever seen before. Beside the blazing campfire stood a kobold who had wrapped himself in a worn out elven robe. Far side the clearing, three enormous trolls shuffled their feet, hesitating. The cobble stretched out his callous paws, with immense gravity hissed and mumbled incomprehensibly. We could barely even guess at all what this meant. Oh, he could do that. He could probably do that. He carefully snuck closer. Hiding behind the elm trees, up close enough to hear the mysterious kobolds mumbling. Four. Ugh. Probably do that. Yeah. Can you roll an eight or more? We try translating the gibberish anyway. Oh, nice one. You, the kobold hiss, pointing at the biggest troll. You were taken by the tribe into the tribe by the chieftain himself, by Hargulka. Hearing the chieftain's name, the troll froze. The cobalt continued his violent hissing. Why? You do not deserve this. Coward, disgrace. Tar took the great kobold. No good brand to you. The cobalt spat on the ground. You shame the tribe. Shame all trolls. With an angry growl, the troll stepped closer to the fire. Okay. The cobalt stretched out his arms to the troll. Sleeves still on fire. Flames, 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 the cobalt hissed, menacingly in common. Flames, 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 the tri trolls applied in their own tongue. The brave troll stepped close to the campfire. You couldn't imagine a more opportune time to strike. It's a three. It's a six. It's through a stone at the cobalt. Well, don't roll a seven. Oh, don't roll a six. Nice. The rock struck the kobold right in the forehead. Bam. The spell weaver went down like a tree. It was clear he'd be out for quite some time, but the trolls, the trolls were ready for battle and were very, very angry. He's not out. 
at all. What are you talking about? Well, everyone's got massive delays. Um, and no one can do anything yet either. down. These are all branded trolls, so I can't do any damage whatsoever. <coughs> what about you? No. Then how about doing some support? Let's do that. And I can come here as well, maybe to here. Do that. What are you doing? No, you won't do those. I clicked on the wrong thing. Well, that doesn't display worked. What's wrong with you lost? I just threw that on. That's over. You can take that off as well. But I wasn't checking. So what killed him then? Or maybe he was hit by something before I stopped the regen. I thought he did regen. He had um moving very slowly on to avoid opportunity attacks. Both him and Akindaya did. I mean, she's not good. What a bless. Okay. Who can I give that to? Doggo took a bit of damage. That one took a lot of damage. We should rest soon anyway. Um, Wand of Bless. Why are you two, I think? And you should always have Kitty out. Oh, you do. It's there. Um, I've got Acid Arrow. It's not bad, actually. Can't be used. Can't be used. Mm, damn it. Everybody else actually do damage. Maybe you. Nope, can't be used. The Bane. The Bless. I have some anyway, but whatever. Give you the Bane then. You've already got a Bless, haven't you? You've got a Cure Moderate. Okay. Look at protection resistance plus two. It's better than that. And that. I'll play this then. Just to get your resistance up a little bit more. Everybody else got a one. Okay. Oh, I haven't read this out yet, have I? This is for um, Valerie's thing. Expensive monogrammed paper has a faint, tangy smell. The lines and steady, delicate handwriting are decorated by whimsical curves. My dear Baroness Jellybobs, I write these words with a heavy heart. The reason I take up my quill today will most likely upset you. Quite recently, I heard a rumour that a lost soul, once blessed with the mercy of my goddess, 
found shelter in your service. It speaks of the daughter of the one most worthy and generous of one of the most worthy and generous patrons of the Order of the Eternal Woes. We once made the mistake of leaving our ranks, and deeply convinced that now is the time for her to return to the path destined by her divine will. We are now travelling to the west, to the place that has been chosen for the new temple of Shelin, that will be occupied by one of the young con congregations of our church. We deemed it necessary to diverge slightly from our path, with but one purpose, to arrive in your lands and collect Val Valerie. May this journey be a cleansing pilgrimage for Shelin's chosen, whose judgment was clouded by the impulsiveness of youth. I request that you free Valerie of her vows of service to you, for fate has been destined for to serve one who is above us all. Direct the girl to the trading post that's on the border between your bounty and Bravoy. There I will be expecting her with my comrades. I pray for your wisdom and mercy, with deep respects and regard. Where do I see it? Well, you're ordering me. And I'm the Baron, not you. And she made her choice. That's up to her, not you. Just because she doesn't do what you wanted to, or what you think she'd do. Fuck you. But that's how I think in real life anyway, any authoritarian. The bloody leftovers of Troll's dinners are scattered beside the rock. Someone stuck this rock hard. Look, this hard rock. Rock hard enough to leave claw marks. What's its surface? Oh, something here. Total like pendant. It. No more loots, goodies. Oh, yeah, there's something just here. Little bag. We're all still next to. There's spuds and cheese in it. Did not exit down here. Nope. Just waited some time. I don't have any down marches yet, do I know? I've only got Shrike Hills and Outlook Skirts. Why is that? Oh, it's Cobbled Trail still lit up. But so was Cobbled Camp, it's not anymore. rest up here. Let's have a look at the cooking. I've been doing lots of shepherd's pie now and um, running out of meat. What's this? Mushrooms, nuts, movement speed. Put it on saving throws. Don't have much cheese for that. Do a haggis then. I've only got plus five. Let's roll thirteen or more. 
I often wonder that people cling to their false ideals. Whatever is familiar seems right to them. Everything new frightens them. Where the world? I'd agree with you, but then you just launch into another speech about grotus. <laughs> nice one, you were lost. <laughs> oh, I've got a haggis. Nice one. A quick save. Definitely need poison and some acid here and there. Resistance, I mean. Not to take. Um, I'll leave the acid resist until later. Self buffs, what do you have? Not anything, do you? This is burning infusion, so they take damage, catch on fire. Okay. Self buffs is that. And. Do you have extend Extendo Ward? Yeah. Um, that's Grace. That's for three minutes. It's not brilliant. Same as that. Although with him it will last six minutes on himself. Okay. This one again six minutes. We'll wait until in combat for that as well. You've got no buffs you really have you. A minute per level. One hour per level. What's the point of going faster when nobody else is? New. I just got the box in. Which can be given to anybody. Give it to. But this is off the armor you're wearing. Do you have plus two? Got one. You got one. So I can put these up by one each. Small and dog can go up by two, and dog can go up by two. They can be on 28s. Okay, hopefully the rest of us won't get attacked. Um, I'll get like, maybe up to 26 then with that. That last 20 minutes. And turn off that. This last one minute per level. Annoying. Around one minute. Okay, nothing there. Visibility one minute a level. Ten minutes a level. Short casting level. So we can see invisible for an hour. But it's only personal. Do it. I like you. Thanks for my alignment, only one minute. This is 10 minutes straight. Okay. Move fear, that's what I wanted. I knew there was always one though. I forget. Okay. It's a big area, this. We have lots and lots going on.
follow my lead. <laughs> Child's play. Didn't you have a lizard? Maybe, maybe it was your sister. Maybe it was your sister. Yeah, we've got Scorch and Ray as well. Why have Scorch and Ray? I do not. Ooh. Mud leap is one of the things we need. Plenty of. I think we need three. Although well, didn't I get some from Sweet Leaf? Sweet teeth. Maybe I've sold them. To look like I'll look for something on its own now. That'd be a mud leaf. As you approach the grove, you hear two voices in soft conversation. The first is above at Barry Dome, begging on the brink of tears. Please, Teresia, my love, don't send me away. I'd rather die then. I want you to live, the girl's voice says sharply. Well, Josh, you're my knight in shining armour. I love you like I've never loved anyone before. But if you stay, you'll... you'll... The girl's voice falters, and she collapses into sobs. Wait, there's someone here. Show yourself. Approaching, you notice a fake couple. A satyr and a dryad. We watch you with an anxious look. What do we know about the village? I mean, I haven't seen it yet, but there is a village to the south. Who are you? My name is Teresia. I've lived here since my tree awoke from the earth. I first saw the sun. And this is Felchus from far away. We're... We are together, the satyr nods. We'll stay together till death takes us. The dryad now arrives at Felchus and folds her arm. Can't you do without the death part? I've managed so far, he grins widely. What are you arguing about? These lands can be beautiful again, but not as long as this monster exists. I'll just curls his hand into a fist. We cannot leave, we must fight. My sweetheart, my love. Teresia's voice trembles on the verge of tears. If tried already, and barely survived, please, I'll endure. I've got to sleep again. If you were to die, it would hurt me far more. And if I let you go, then you're far away, but alive and well. Look at me, Teresia. I'll never leave you. Never, I beg you. Don't send me away. Being without you, it will kill me as surely as the scythe tree itself. The scythe tree won't leave us be. Simply being brave is not enough to defeat it, Felchus. Sooner or later, it will kill you. Dry turns to you hopefully. I beg you, put an end to this creature. End our suffering, and its suffering as well. And find a way to reward you. What is the scythe tree? Why is it dangerous? Well, it's... Teresia curls her fingers, imitating claws, pretends to snatch up something with them. Raj just jumps in. First, it's just a tree. Fire is not his friend. You'd best use a weapon suited to chop through its bark, not impale it. Right. I've, and also, its branches are very long. Be careful, it can reach you from afar. Maybe I could help, depending on what you're offering. It's not much, but... To get a small chest from under a tree roots. Fine, I'll help you. I'm so grateful. You are our saviour. We find it south of here in a large glade. 
Good luck. We'll wait for you here. What happened to the village? Giant sighs a heavy sigh. Gives a heavy sigh and closes her eyes, as if remembering. It was a beautiful place. A human village on the edge of a real fake, fake kingdom. We lived in peace alongside the faith for generations, in that way friendship, sometimes even by love. The bride looks away. That is, until our queen, Elotropsia, lost her heart to the headman's daughter. Such a beautiful couple, but I've got something with her. I'm going to drink some water. Back in a sec. It happened at their wedding day. Both humans and Faye had gathered to celebrate the union. No one knows what happened next. In the midst of the festivities, Calitropsia suddenly transformed. She changed into a monster. The vo dryad's voice drops and she glances around as if afraid his mother might hear. She became the scythe tree. She killed her bride, her love, then destroyed the village. Humans fled or were killed. Same with Faye. My kingdom fell in a heartbeat. I couldn't leave my tree, or slept for many years, until I awoke to the sound of the pipes playing such beautiful music. She smiles at Falcos, or Falchos, Falcos. Maybe. I go from the village, Mao de Dryad. Vesia smiles. Your world and the world of the Fae are great and wide, yet rarely do they touch. It is unfortunate, but when they do, great joy is possible. Not simply between two souls, but more so when the third arises from their love. A child, either born or found. Changeling. Here, for instance, when my tree and I were far younger than we are now, a girl lived here. Elga Verniex. She was a daughter of the woman from the village. The father a satyr. We loved her so much, watching her grow, laugh, learn. Dryad shakes her head sadly, but her mother took her and left. If she still lives, she's certainly forgotten all about us. Our poor father missed her so much. The grief never left him. It was his eyes. It was in his eyes when he passed. The dryad is silent for a moment, averting her eyes, then turns to face you again. Humans and Faye both love, and love strongly. We feel the same pain when we are cut off from the ones we hold in our hearts. Okay, leave. So kill the side three. And the dame. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm not going that way. I think we have to go through a, a, a check anyway to get up there. But that way is death. Until at least level 9, 10, maybe 12. I think they're level 12 to 14, maybe 16. Dogs was taking a lot of damage in from that werewolf. Yeah. I can't use things from here, can I? Scrolls of healing. Constantly use them one at a time. Actually, no, I used it on the wrong one. It wasn't dog, was it? It was smaller on. Okay. Oh, how many do you need? Need another thirty. Sixteen, another fourteen or fifteen would be nice, thanks. Thirteen, close enough. OK, 
go with that later. Or something there. I think that ding was the um, mobility check. Go into the Glade of Doom with the greater enraged owlbears. Oh, a thousand gold. Ring of protection plus two. Okay, you have plus one. You have plus two already. That'd be for you then, I guess. Don't need both. You can't have both anyway. Okay. I can die. It doesn't have any rings. You have one. Twenty. Twenty. Excuse me. Okay. Well, oh, sister's got healing. Pretty decent healing as well. It's like a medium. Pretty hard, but uh, her sea invisibility didn't hit those. So big, so silly, so mortal. You're not welcome here. That's Fay. Will of the Wisps and Fay. Oh, one up there as well. That was easy. Miss something. Onward leaf. Nothing from behind. I'm no. glad you called. Empowered, burn, extendo. It's two. Let's hit that to zero. Should get two black footed attacks with these two though. And I'll turn off that. And you can turn off that. Yeah. Leave that there for when I leave. All according to plan. So big, so spare. Yeah. I don't love. We do have one of the wisps I later. The Some big ones as well. Chain lightning, so. That's going to be useful. I'm not going to hear. That takes it down to two. It takes it down to zero, actually. That takes it down to one. I want some burn. And you. You can't get burned until you go through corpses, can you?
Yeah, this thing works on her then. It did nothing. It be equal to a higher than her character level. How far are you behind you lost? 50. Let's get another 50 experience then. If everyone at the same time. This looks like an ambush. Not a bacon tree. I've got an onion. I don't know what he's killed. Crap in the middle. Don't think you get up there. I don't know if you can dimension door up there. If you can, that will be much later though. Dag like tree ant. Okay. My skills are getting rusty. Ona Adayana. Ona Adayana. If maybe the extra yeah. and the blur. Okay, you get a blast out. Hopefully, it's just one. And it's five or six of them. We are in serious trouble. In due time. Off. Oh, there's two of them. Got some sneak attacks though. Let's get a bit closer. Nice. Now we leveled up. Okay, I'll pause the video here, get a level up on everybody, and see you in a second. So, be right back. Okay, I've just leveled everybody up.
and it's about three quarters of an hour now this um, episode so I'll just do a quick over review of what I've done extra level here got um, skill focus in persuasion because of the fear and the thug and stuff and you can set can assist we got fire's fury when using fire blast or concept blasts that include fire as your elemental overflow bonus to the damage dealt if your kinetic blast normally adds double your elemental overflow that bonus to the damage these effects these effects stack so have an extra burn now does double the effect we need to get this elemental overflow though choose a different element well maybe we get it here expanded element yeah it's about now well you we see why i'm thinking ahead anyway that's about there Harim just uh, got shield focus and that's it i haven't looked at his spell book yet get an extra less possibly Yeah, I can actually bless. Even though no. actually one of those, just in case for long encounters on the map. Nothing there, nothing there. Oh, the freedom of movement. Absolutely take that one. Do we need death ward yet? And probably that. And that's 10 minutes per level, so that's really cool. It's not coming, although. Damn you. Anyway, um. Maybe another level Inquisitor. We got Lesser Restoration for her. And in the class, we've got Power Attack. She hasn't used that yet. And Outflank. And now her dogs will have it as well. But her Smilodon will have it. So they get a plus four when flanking each other. I can die a level of ranger again. You got many shot. By making a full attack with a bow, your first attack fires two arrows. If the attack hits, both arrows hit. Apply precision based damage, such as sneak attack, and critical hit damage only once. Damage bonuses from using a composite bow with high strength applies each arrow, as to other damage bonuses. Such as Avengers' favoured enemy bonus, which will come in very useful later on. Damage reduction and resistances apply separately to each arrow, so it's not as good as clustered shots, but get this and clustered shots. The damage reduction and resistances apply to the total, not for each or for each attack made. She lost. You got extra bombs, extra four bombs a day. And spell book. You got level three, so learned haste. Very useful because it's group. Doesn't last very long. Or seven rounds, just over a minute. Can't get up here yet. And this is Kaliki, because I did this and then I swapped over. Here she's got Kinexis level 7, and she's got a second element, Earth. Now she's got Water and Earth, and an extra Kinetic Blast damage dice. So, now if we look at her, we've got Water, Earth, both simple, uh, physical blasts, and we've got Mud, composite blast. This does 12 to 32 damage, as does this. Uh, I'm just bludgeoning in. The earth does slashing, piercing, and bludgeoning. The mud just does bludgeoning, but it's 20 to 60 damage. Way more. But look at the burn. She has to spend 
only like um, attack once. Only attack once every two turns. That's a whole round. Yeah, that's pretty bad. If I maximise it. So that'd be the opener. It'd be that. Yeah, that does a significantly more damage. Actually, if I do that... And then yeah, I can empower all my normal ones if I don't move. It's a bit micromanagey, but that's what it is. And for her sister, I went the same route as me. I went to a level of thug to get the frightening aspect here. And I took, well, they both got weapon focus kinetic blast on those, those levels as well, her and sister. And here I took Where's it gone? Sure I took her a Took her a Persuasion skill thing, I think. Or was that me? Yeah, skill focus and persuasion. So I get plus three. And when I get to level 10, I'll go for another plus three, which comes and useful for uh, making them shaken or frightening them off. So that's the level up. Thanks for watching, everyone. We will see you all the next episode where we will go and we got the um, the scythe tree, we got the old witch, we got the missing son, and we've got a village down. You just see the edges of it; they look like a little chimney. Put things down there to sort out. So I hope to see you then. Until then, bye for now.